I have Barbara Teller Analysis on with me today, and I'm really thrilled because I've had your your textiles, your weavings before. I've known you for I bet it's close to 30 years. You At think? Least, yeah, yeah, it's been a very long time. Yeah. I know you didn't have any gray hair, and I had gray, <laughs> and I had hair that wasn't gray <laughs> when we first when I first met. So Barbara is really the quintessential master weaver i would say you know well, i think a lot of people would say if they thought about who are the great weavers if you're not in the top three i would be surprised mm-hmm. and i'm i'm saying all time not just like living i'm talking all the time thank you, you know, we'll Appreciate s- that. yeah start you yeah. off with a big hand. <laughs> <laughs> so t- you just got back from uh, indian market right i did yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah. we did really well in spite of the rain and uh it was really nice to see a lot of people. It's a 100-year anniversary for Indian Market. And it was really thrilling because um, a pottery you won. I know, You right? know, to honor the ancestors that started that whole yeah, thing. Right. And a Hopi uh, weaving one in the weaving category. And again, to honor the, wow. the, the, the people who started the whole thing, you know. So it was really thrilling. I'm just really glad that they honor them that way. How many weavers of all types are in the in, uh, Indian market? Do you know? Um, I started in 1983, mm. and there was maybe eight or nine of us mm-hmm. at that time. Mm-hmm. And now it's grown over, I, I want to say, at least 200. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Is that many? So, yeah. And most of those, I assume, are Navajo weavers? Oh, most of them. Yeah. yeah. All but today. they include, you know, the Pueblo weavers. Yeah. And they have a Choctaw weaver that's also there and a few others. Have they changed the categories at all, like so traditional or contemporary? Have they done any of that? Because like your son, mm-hmm. Michael, does very – well, he has in the past. I don't know what he's doing now, but – you know, like I bought one that my son has, I gave him, he saw, mm. which is like a Pokemon kind oh, yeah. of thing. Does he do that kind of stuff, the games and things still? He's still doing that. Yeah. yeah he's still doing his uh, pieces, and it, they fall under the uh, contemporary category. And they divide um, between traditional and contemporary yeah. and large pieces and small pieces. And, yeah, that makes yeah, sense. So, they should. Yeah. Now, you yeah. Can't, you know, how do you compare? I mean, I yeah. think I could compare it, but it would yeah. be hard. But then they also have like fabrics and clothing and stuff in our category. That's which, in your category, huh? Which I think should have its own. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so. Yeah, that's very. Diff- yeah. yeah, that's that. I don't get that. Huh. Yeah. Have you brought that up to him? No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Anybody from Swai is listening to that? It does seem like that would be a different character, and it's yeah. and it's unfair and a kind of for both of you, not just. It should you know. they should promote the, the you know people who are making making clothing right. and, and in their own right because some people, some of the designers are coming up with incredible They're unbelievable. things, and they should be, um, you know, awarded their own on their own merit, you know, and stuff. Yeah, in fact, so, when I go so. and look, this is the first time I've missed it. I was telling you before from thirty years because I. Had to be in Montana, unfortunately, mm-hmm. but um, I go and look at the clothing. I've actually mm-hmm. gotten things from people, yeah. and yeah. you know, to me, it's you know, just uh, to me, that's blowing up kind mm-hmm. of in its own right. Yeah, and like back in 1983 and on, you <laughs> yeah. know, it was just traditional weaving, I'm sure, or or traditional uh, clothing, you know, and stuff. And now they're just coming up with elaborate clothing, and right. you know, it's just like. Uh-huh. With the fashion show, you know, that, huge, the whole right? thing had just blown up, and it's just amazing. I know, and it yeah. seems like people are really focusing on that a mm-hmm. lot. Yeah. You know, which yeah. is, to me, I mean, it's I think it's fine because it brings in a different group of people, mm-hmm. and we want more people to be mm-hmm. exposed to Native arts, whatever right. they may be, traditional or contemporary. Right. Or like your son, who works in a traditional media which is weaving done in right. a traditional style but is completely contemporary right and he yeah. does uh, like um weavings that are like an omen to spider-man and right. the comic book i know that i character, love that you know? i just and, love that yeah and he he does some really incredible things you know like um anime stuff yeah on his weaving and it's just really great to see him blossom that yeah. way and, no, and is he so. doing it full time? Yes, he is. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And he's also programming and doing um, graphic arts and stuff. But yeah. 
you know, so he he does both of them, but his his main nope. job is weaving. And where is he living now? He's here in Tucson. Yay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's another <laughs> another podcast. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, he's the next generation, right? We yes. that's what we need. Yes. You know, in mm-hmm. so many ways. Yeah. And does he have a website? Uh, he does, but I'm not sure what it is at yeah. this point. <laughs> <laughs> Probably his name. It's hard yeah. to know. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll, what we'll do is we'll add that on the end of it because I assume he kind of like both of you, you've done a kind of a unique route, I think, because you've really, because your weavings are, first of all, you can't make many because you're tapestry weavers. So there's, there's not many to come out Mm -hmm. and you don't really need a dealer. I mean, we've worked together and done some Mm -hmm. things, but you don't Mm -hmm. really have to. And is he kind of the same? He kind of does his own thing. He kind of does his own thing. I don't think he's ever done like gallery or, or, um, or, um, you know, dealer um, route. He's never had to do that, you know, mainly because we just did do, do the two shows, the Herd Museum Fair right. in, in March and then Indian Market in August. And you can celebrate And in that. between there, you know, there's time to make pieces for each show. Right. So. And I think that's something maybe people don't realize when you do one of these weavings because you primarily or only do tapestry. Yes. Which I've never done any heavy. Yeah, which is like 80... Weaving wefts per inch basically or higher, or higher. Yeah. Yeah. yeah i mean ours, that's the cutoff right yeah ours is anywhere from like 100 to 120 wow yeah that's amazing yeah. so i don't see any glasses on <laughs> i i have glasses yeah <laughs> i was gonna say there's no way right you can't leave without glasses i have huge magnifying glasses do you no yeah. i don't <laughs> not yet <laughs> just regular reading glasses <laughs> <laughs> well some day you may have to go yeah. to that and you hand spin all your wool right yes. Yeah, yeah, which is also, you know, mm-hmm. people don't realize that's like yeah. 40% of the time, right? Yeah, that's what I do right after market. Yeah. I'll spin all my wool, get ready, put them in big balls, and then, I, you know, I take two weeks off just to do that. Yeah. And then I'll start weaving again for, because yeah. like now I have to get ready for the herd. Yeah, that's in which March. Which is in March. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because so. you, at, at the market you had three weavings, right? Yeah. Two big ones which you sold and mm-hmm. one you decided you'd keep. Yeah. <laughs> and... Yeah. But that takes you six months, right? Or longer? At least, yeah. yeah right? At least, yeah. You know, one big piece for us, big piece is like, say, 16 by 25 yeah. inches. Yeah. And those take anywhere from three months to four months to complete. Yeah. You know, so. And then, of course, you did the one huge one. Yeah, with that, my older sister, Roseanne. Yeah, yeah, that one. So I remember that textile. I remember yeah. that one. That was, took you four years, right? Yeah, uh, well. It took two and a half years of actual weaving time. Yeah. But it was on the loom for four years. Four years, yeah. Yeah. Because one year my sister and I didn't work on it because we were mad at each other. <laughs> <laughs> that happens. <laughs> well, and if you're mad at each yeah, other. And yeah, she hit all the wool, wool, uh, wool balls from me. <laughs> and I couldn't work <laughs> on it. That's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. And that would have been frustrating because you both know you've got a masterpiece on it. Yeah. That, you know? Yeah. And you can only do maybe one of these in a lifetime. Yeah. But yeah. that's what it takes, I mm-hmm. guess, honestly, to go through yeah. that kind of angst to be mm-hmm. able to finish something of yeah. that worthwhile. And then I did another one in 91 that I finished, which also won Best of Show. That's right. And that's at the um, the Historic Museum in Santa Fe. Yeah. Right now as um, part of the exhibit for the 100 year um, oh, wow. anniversary. Who owns it? Is the, um, mm-hmm. It belongs to a private collection. Okay, so they yeah. loaned it for that. Yeah. Oh, that's why. And so how long is that up? Do you know? I think until March. Yeah. I'm not sure. It's uh, the museum right on uh, Lincoln. Yeah, it's one of my yeah. favorite, yeah. actually. And so is that a 100 year? They, they're they doing an exhibit of all the 100 years of Swaya stuff? Uh, yeah. They have some pots there from like, you know, 100 years ago oh, wow. when they have, you know, weavings. Well, my weavings. And then they have a bunch of. Other art. Are both your best of shows in that? No, just the last second one. Yeah. The first one is, uh, we're not really sure what happened to it. Yeah, so. and that's a big textile. Yeah. Well, how big was that? It's the first one? Yeah, the one. It was uh, five feet across, almost nine inches long. Um, nine nine feet. feet long. Yeah, five yeah. by nine, yeah. Five that's by huge. nine, yeah. And so you've won best of show. So for those people who are listening and maybe don't know what best of show is, this is like the biggest deal of all, right? This right. is the thing that's, right. I mean, it's winning best of actor 
basically at the Oscars, but exactly. more competitively. I right. think it's actually more competitive right. than that. Right. And, and you have to compete against other art forms. Every form. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've judged that before. And it's mm -hmm. not, I mean, every, you know, if they have a thousand people exhibiting, mm -hmm. you're exhibiting, you're competing against all of them. Yes. And mm -hmm. has best, have best of show ever been one for a textile other than you? I, they have. There was a, a, a yay rug that was done by, um, oh, I forget her name. She unfortunately passed on. And then um, Cody, Le Lena, I think her name is mm -hmm. Cody. Mm -hmm. She did one that also won. So, so. four maybe. Yeah, in but I'm years. the only one with two. <laughs> yeah, well, there's very, very, very <laughs> few people that have yeah. won two anyway yeah for best of show i mean it's almost impossible yeah. to do it when either the bead worker she's yeah. got like three yeah but it's yeah. very rare very rare. i think and russell sanchez won this year i don't yeah. think he'd ever won before i had don't he? think so i mean yeah. and he was you know he's always win best of class best of division all this stuff you mm -hmm. know and um he's always right there but he'd never mm -hmm. won and that yeah. to me is also kind of amazing that he'd never won mm -hmm. but you know just a hard thing yeah it's yeah. great potters and weavers and never will just yeah. like they don't yeah. ever win it's an oscar great. you have to do great work and put your best work forward yeah. and then you also have to hope the judges like it yeah, yeah. <laughs> well it's true and you're dependent yeah. on who's the judges yeah. right and who pulls for you i can tell you that from just having done it yeah you know that if you get somebody that loves textiles they're going to be maybe more yeah positive it's hard to know it could yeah. be just the opposite you just don't know mm -hmm. it's a it's a crapshoot i think the um judge people who judge um art forms um should have um an art one of the artists um a scholar and a a collector or gallery owner yeah. or something just you know, for a balance. I agree. Yeah. And I think they try to do some of that. I know yeah. when I've done Potter, we've had Potters that were part of it, mm -hmm. you know. And they can see things at a different angle that yeah. I can. You know, if I'm, yeah. I see it from one angle and a maker can see it from a different angle. Mm -hmm. And a collector mm -hmm. can see it, like you said, yeah. or a museum director can see it from a different angle. And sometimes what I've found when I've been in that situation that people go to just the biggest things, but... You know, little things, too, can mm -hmm. be just tremendous. Sure. You know, I mean, I'm sure that you've had some rugs that you thought were better than the ones maybe that even won Best of Show. Mm -hmm. But, you know, <laughs> they may not have got the recognition. Yeah. So n mm -hmm. now you have to, has there ever been anybody that's won, I wonder, that's a, uh, a, a mom or a dad and their kids? Because you've got Michael who's competing now, right. too, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I compete against my sister. Linda. Yes. Uh, yeah. And she's won a bunch of stuff oh, yeah. too. And uh, <laughs> I competed against Michael and then before Sierra, you know, became an executive producer and showrunner of her shows. Yes. She, she was all, also in competition. But, yeah. Uh, so and Michael and Sierra, so. they're fourth generation, I mean, sixth generation. Sixth generation. Yeah. yeah. Weavers, right? Yeah. Which and we'll then our granddaughter about. is seventh generation. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And she's weaving now. She's clearly. weaving. She's won awards at Indian Market. Uh, how old is she? She's 12. She just turned 21 yesterday. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So seventh generation. Seventh generation. And she was at, so she was at SWAI. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell yeah, people she's what. She's in the Navy now, so she doesn't really have uh, uh, time to, yeah, to, to weave anymore. <laughs> uh, well, send her some yarn in a little yeah. room or something. So, you know, kind of really do, you know, yeah. just so she'll continue. Because as you know very well, it's muscle memory, too. Right. You know, it's. Yeah, it's that's true. It is, right? Yeah. So tell us, people, you know, to listening about Swaya, because I understand it from other artists, but what's that environment of Indian market mm -hmm. when you go? Because it's not just about competing or winning or whatever, but it's like a, a family get-together, mm -hmm. right? Wouldn't you yes, say that's true? I would I'm, say that. It feels like that way for me, and yeah. I'm not, you know, native. You know, and I started going to Indian market in 1983, mm -hmm. you know, and I had um, people around me who had, kids the same age as my kids mm -hmm. and they kind of grew up together you know and I you meet collectors that buy your pieces and their kids connect with your kids you right. know and then they they kind of make your booth a home base you know so when yep. they're out running around they know that the kids always come to your booth yep. and, and stuff and I always made um 
uh, little beds for them under the table, <laughs> you know, so they would go in and rest, you know, and while their their parents would go shopping right. and stuff. So it just, it becomes like family. And every year you go to market and you meet up with the same people and you talk to them and see what happened right. and how it's going and stuff. And, and, you know, and it's just, it just becomes family, yeah. you know. And I know that there's a lot of politics involved in the Indian market. I know that there's a lot of people who don't like what SOEV stands for or, you know, all that. But I just don't bother with any of that because I go to show people what I do. I go because I want to see my friends, you know, see how their kids are doing, right. meet the new grandkids, you know, and stuff, and just and make new friends, new collectors. Every yeah. year I get I get new ones, I'm you sure, know, and stuff. So that's just my goal, and I just leave the politics and all that stuff yeah. on the side, yeah. you know, because I mean it's going been going on for a hundred years, you know, and right. it's probably going to go on for another hundred years, so. and you know. Directors are going to come and go, but you know, and Indian Market is always going to be there. Yeah, I mean, I always yeah. have my people that I go just to see to say hi. I might not even buy anything, but sometimes yeah. I do. Sometimes I don't think I'm going to go buy something. I do. Yeah. And even though I yeah. was missed the first one in 30 years this year, I still was like <laughs> called Roy Talahaft one. I was like, "What's going on? How's it going? <laughs> it's raining. It's raining. It's raining." You know. Yeah, it and, poured. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. got the whole lowdown. Yeah. <laughs> on I mean, Friday, Saturday was just. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, we, we we all want it, mm -hmm. but we don't want it that day, right. or at least later in the yeah. day. So, but it didn't affect you, right? You yeah. already you have people was, waiting. No, we were, yeah, Mikey sold out before eight. <laughs> yeah, he sold his big piece, and then you know I did okay by noon. I was fine. Yeah. You know? So it took my sister a couple of days, but she sold all she her sold pieces all sorts, too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and and that's the other fun part. I'm sure at the end you're all like, okay. Yeah. You know, did this guy buy? Did he come by? Did yeah. this come by? Yeah. Yeah. And you just talk. You just talk about what you do, you know, how, what what the piece means to you. Right. And just get them engaged. Right. You know, and, 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 and then all of a sudden they can't live without it, you know. Right. And that's the best feeling. Yeah. Yeah. And most people don't understand how difficult that is to do for yeah. two days. Yeah. You know, because Indian Market has like a hundred thousand people show yeah. up or more, maybe. I don't yeah. know what it was this year, but yeah, you know, it's a lot of people, it's a, a lot, lot of, people. of talking, and you have to try to, like, mm -hmm. you know, you want to spend time with the people you know are buyers, yeah, you know, but everybody else is like, I want to talk to yeah. you too, and you're, you know, you're Barbara, who's won <laughs> two best of shows, mm -hmm. you know, so they all want to definitely come see you, yeah. so it makes it. <laughs> Yeah, but, and it's nice because my booth is way up Lincoln. Yes, I'm, and it's far away from the plaza. Yes, and people who are really interested in your piece yeah. will make the, the trip up to where you yeah. are, you know. And then I've had space. I had a booth, you know, on the plaza, yes. and I just you can't get customers to come and visit no. because there's too much activity yep. going on, and and it's tighter it's, there it's too. It's tighter, yep. and yeah, it's it's really really hard. No, it's so. true. There's people I have not talked to because I just go, I can't fight it. Yeah, you know, yeah. maybe on Sunday. Oh. Yeah, but you know, if they're really great, yeah, Sunday they're zip, they're nothing left, <laughs> yeah. and I want to know what's selling. I want to know what people are doing. I want to know, you know, mm -hmm. I want to see what the great objects are that they've done and right. by Sunday there may be like they're gone nothing, yeah you know, like oh, we're back gone <laughs> yeah so you know some of them are like that for sure yeah so I want to go back and just kind of get a little history for people because uh, I know a lot of your history but a lot of people don't and okay. so you grew up um, basically at the two great hills trading post in the Totalina yes. valley basically not basically. To, not Totalina but the, well, yeah, Paulina, because I went to grade school there. Yeah. But um, my father was a trader at Two Great Hill Trading Post. That was Sam, right? Yeah, for about oh, close to 35 years. And he, uh, we had a small apartment behind the um, the store. Right. And then we also had a house down at my mom's land in Newcomb. Yes. So we traveled between the two places yeah. and stuff. And, and the, your mom, Ruth, was a great weaver as great well. Great weaver, yeah. yeah. And she always had a loom set up you know so that when people come visit 
the trading post. Right. And they would say, I expected to see weavers sitting under the trees. You know? <laughs> and my dad would say, they're too busy at home <laughs> to be sitting under a tree. <laughs> so, but then he would have people come, you know, to inside our little apartment. And my mom would weave. And then at nighttime, my mom would say, how do I say this in English? You know, like how she does her work and stuff. Right. And then we would coach her. You know, and so by the time we all left for high school and stuff, she was pretty good at her English. English. She, yeah, so she, she, she she learned that way. Yeah, yeah. And so everyone at yeah. the house, Danae, was your primary, right? And your kids, did they yeah. grow up with both, or? Um, they grew up with both. They understand it more than they speak it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have to practice like right. anything, right? You know, if you're mm -hmm. if you're on the res, you're going to be speaking it, right? You know. Yeah. So and so so yeah. she learned how to speak. English by the time you guys went to college. Well, yeah. Yeah. When we all left for, from high school. Yeah. Yes. And you went to Arizona State, right? No, I didn't. My sister, Linda, oh, did. Okay. Yeah. I went to a business college, but I didn't finish. Oh. And yeah. Did you know at that with... time? Because you started weaving really young, right? Yeah. Like I did. eight or something? Yeah. Um, because my dad would get in trouble with his employer. Mm. Employer. He, because he would say that I don't want your kids around or. Mm. too rowdy or do this and do right. that he would pack us up and then move us to my uh, grandfather's land over in white rock and then so we ended up living with our grandparents for the summer yeah you know and so she would already my grandmother would already have a rug standing for me and my first weaving was a twill Mm. She taught me how to do twill weaving. And then I brought the twill weaving back to my mom's house. And my other grandma, my mom's mom, mm -hmm. freaked out. She goes, you're not a twill weaver. You're a two-gray hill weaver, uh -huh. you know, and stuff. So there was like this battle between the two of them. But I learned more from my, my Nolly, my grandmother, my paternal grandmother. And um, I learned more about, like, the stories and the songs and the prayers. and Right. From her, right. then my other my other grandmother, she was always very busy, she, weaving all the time. I hardly ever remember her doing anything else but sitting in front of her loom, you know. And her goal was always to um, finish a piece, you know, just lay down with her comb and go to sleep and not wake up. And basically, that's what happened with her. Mm. So, but I learned. You know, living at the trading post, you had running water, you had electricity, right. you had television and stuff. Right. And then in the summer, you move over to sheep camp and you have right. nothing, you know, and stuff. And we would tell you have them, sheep. Yeah, we have to, sheep. To, to what you have to take care of. of sheep. Yes. You know, <laughs> and my, we would tell my grandfather, you know, like, I love Lucy's on, you know, or like, <laughs> you know, Green Acres is on. And he goes, that's nothing. He goes, but he used to use his hands and do these puppets on the ceiling of the, the Hogan uh. and just tell stories. Just, you know, every day the story was different. And it was really cool about how first man, first woman came to be. And, you know, and all this time I had no idea they were creation stories. You know, people say you can't tell creation stories in the summertime, but he would change them to where they were, uh, th those people were modern people, not, right. the, you know, the the, uh, the real stories, right. you know, and stuff. And um, You probably I, knew that if you didn't get it there, you might not get it. Yeah. Right? Because you're only there in the summer. Right, right. And then he, you know, he tells stories about his... Um, his grandparents, because mm. they were, um, uh, one of the, and he was from Chin Lee, my grandfather mm. was, and so his grandparents were one of the people that got moved to Bosco, um, yeah. and then that's how we got our name Teller, because they, they were giving out last names, and they asked his grandfather what he did, and he says, I'm a storyteller, I keep stories. And so that's how our last name became Teller. Oh, at Bosque Redondo yeah. when, during the long walk mm -hmm. when the Navajos were interned from 1863 to 1868. Right. Yeah. And then my grandfather was born in 1868 in mm. Chinle. Mm, so and, right uh, when they came back, right I guess. Right when they came back. Wow. Yeah. And then he, he lived to be like 103. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, a long time. So you, kn ago. So you knew your grandfather? 
Very well. Yeah, Very that's, well. I spent yeah. many, 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 every summer with him from maybe when I was five until high school. Mm. Yeah. Because he would have had lots of stories from his yeah. parents of the long walk. Yeah. And I was a junior in high school when he passed. Mm. Yeah. Wow. But I lost my grandmother earlier when I was 11, somewhere mm. around there. Your paternal yeah. grandmother? Yeah. yeah. the one that taught yeah. you to do the mm -hmm. the twelves. Yeah. She would tell me that, you know, she saw me in her visions, mm. you know, like me um, becoming this famous weaver and, you know, traveling the world and telling people about our work. Mm. And and he she would say, I see you getting on those planes, airplanes, mm. you know. And I was, you know, eight, nine years right. old and just laugh it off. I thought she was crazy. <laughs> yeah, and she probably you never know? even yeah. been on a plane herself, yeah. I doubt. And it was like everywhere I went, because I went to Tallinn boarding school, and then I went to Aztec High School. Yeah, what was the boarding school like? This was an Indian school? It, yeah, it was, um, you know, just, um, it was run by the BIA, yeah. you know, and we... Um, March to eat breakfast. We marched to school. We marched to go have fun. We marched. It was all about marching. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was, you know, there's a lot of good things that happen and a lot of bad things that happen mm. there for me. Um, I think I was more aware of the world because I lived at the trading post. Mm, yes. You know, I knew that there were other um people in the world that are just not Navajo. I've been mm. dealing with a, um, um, a white trader and the, the guy who brought the bread was um, Hispanic. Mm. And the guy who brought the Pepsi, you know, he was somewhere from the Middle East, mm -hmm. you know. And so you just kind of have an idea that there are other people around, you know. And then the tourists that would come, you know, they right. were from England, they were from France, Germany, right. you know, and all these places. And so I kind of understood that there are other languages mm. you know and stuff and picking up a lot of uh, english languages from the trader and you know, the wife and their kids you know and then um so when i went to boarding school it wasn't scary for me because i already knew there were such things as electricity you know, like right. turning on a light switch and there right. was, uh, you know, impl indoor plumbing, <laughs> right. you know, and stuff. Whereas kids that came from the desert or the mountains, you know, you turn on the light and they totally freak out. And, yeah. You know, they didn't understand about the indoor plumbing, how that works, and, right. you know, and stuff. So I think for them, they had a harder time. And they didn't than speak I English, did. right? And they didn't speak English. And they English. probably expected you to speak English at the school, right? Right. And right. this was middle school? This is... Grade school, grade school, all the way to so like from first grade, first to, grade to sixth grade. Yeah, yeah, and then middle school. I went to Aztec High School. It was also, but it's a public school, right? And but we stayed in the dorm, but we went to a public school, so we were able to go to school with white kids, Hispanics, blacks. But still, you were at a boarding school. It's still, we were at boarding school. Yeah, you're not seeing your mom and dad or your grandma yeah. or any of that or your yeah. cultural stuff. You're stuck in a yeah boarding school yeah and that was so basically first through graduation the whole time yes yeah 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 from first grade all the way till i graduate high school how do you think that affected you to have that um i um i think it really affected me in two different ways one was i realized and because basically I raised myself in those right. places, right. you know, so I know I can depend on myself to get out of whatever I'm doing or move myself forward. And the other thing was I would never do that to my children. Yeah. You know, I would never put them in a position to where they had to fend for themselves, you know. And I right. remember kids' hairs being chopped off. I remember right. them standing on their knees for, you know, hours on end the because they spoke their language, you know, and just little things like that. It just kind of stays with you, you know. Yellow and, soap. Uh, Did they do that too? Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Well, hot chili. Yeah. You know, they would put hot chili in your mouth. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, it was, but it was 
there was a lot of teachers that were sympathetic and they were willing to help and that they I think helped me get you know become the person that I am mm -hmm. you know and stuff and yeah but you still have to deal with the abandonment. Oh, yeah. You know, whether yeah. it was forced or not. I mean, you're yeah. forced abandonment from your home and your family. Mm -hmm. That doesn't go away. No. I mean, that no. just never goes away. Yeah. 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 Behind here, I'll, but, sh I'll show you. I've got images of Carlisle School that I keep on my wall at all yeah. times. Just to remind me. Yeah. Yeah. I think people like that went for further and further away from their homes had it a lot more. I bet. You know, whereas you know, Tallina was only like five miles down the road from Tigray, you know, and, and and it wasn't. I didn't feel the the uh, abandonment. I didn't have that. Yeah, you still you see know, because, your markers of the mountains and the things. Mm -hmm. Right. 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 You had a sense of place. Yeah, and so I, it wasn't, you know, but I think people who were, got shipped off to Riverside, California, yeah. and. San Francisco and Salt Lake and right. you know, those people, I think, had had the worst. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, not a fun thing to have no. to go through regardless. <laughs> 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 and so when you get through at Aztec with high school, mm -hmm. did you, were you weaving at that time? Um, I was, you know, because every, um, um, Every time we got out of school, I would go home. My mom would have a couple of weaving set up for me. Yeah. And I would just sit there and weave all summer. Yeah. And then I would take it to the trading post or to Mr. Hatch, you know, and Mr. Hatch was so nice to me. Mm. <laughs> and he would buy my pieces, and then we'd go into town and buy my clothes mm. for, for the year. Mm. And every year it was like that, you know, and it was – but I hid the fact that I could weave – and I didn't want people to know that I could do that mm. because, especially at Aztec High School, um, kids find out that you're a weaver, you know, and then they're like, I didn't realize you were old. <laughs> yeah, they tease and you. Cause, because they assume weaving with old people. Mm. They never seen a young person weaving, right. you know. And it wasn't until I got to Phoenix, I told my mom and dad that I'm done with the weaving. I'm, I'm going to do something different. You know, I'm going to school and stuff. And I lasted about a month. And I <laughs> called my dad and I said, I can't, you know, I want to come home. And he's like, there's nothing for you here. Yeah. You know, you either have to work for the government or the tribe. And you can't, you can't do that. Right. You know. So they came down the week after I called. Mm -hmm. And my mom had a loom. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't want this. And she was like, all your life you've had this. This is your best friend. Mm -hmm. You just need your best friend in your room. You know, so that's how it started. You know, and I, by then I had made some Navajo friends. And yeah. they would come over and they'd see a loom in my apartment. And they were like, what is that doing here? <laughs> you know. Thought we got away from that. Yeah. Right. And then they, you know, they, I, and they would say, do you really know how to do that? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. You know, I started weaving in front of them and stuff and you know and pretty soon somebody would show up and say I have a loom can you help me set this up and can you help me do this I'm like yeah I could do that you know right and so just getting a bunch of them to start weaving again and you know and it it, it was it was um I felt home yeah and I felt like this is what I'm supposed to do you know and I worked for an insurance company, and I worked for Revlon, American Express, you know. But it just, it wasn't satisfying for me. And you, you were know? weaving all the time. I when was you were, weaving all the yeah. time. But I was having a hard time selling my pieces because I would take it to Scottsdale and to these galleries, and they would say, no, we don't buy weavings, you know. If your weaving is on the truck, we'll buy it, you know. And there was like, they couldn't cut out the middleman it just they just mm. couldn't believe it and by then my i got married and my husband was had made business cards and they literally laugh in my face like mm. there's that weaver with the business card this is like the 80s <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so and then i would take my weavings home to sell yes and my dad was like what are you doing you know we sell all these weavings to those galleries and i said nobody wants to look at them 
they don't want to even let me in the door. Mm. And then he told me that Joe Tanner's opening up a new uh, gallery in Scottsdale. Mm. Let's go see him. Tell him who your dad is. And because Joe Tanner and my dad uh, were, um, they learned how to do trading business from Joe, Joe's dad in White Rock. Mm. And um, and then Joe's dad was had close ties with my grandparents. Mm. And he goes, just tell him who your family is. Right. So I had two pieces and I went to see Joe. And at first when I walked in, he goes, we're not buying. He goes, we don't, we're not buying weavings. And I go, do you know my dad, you know, Sam Teller from Two Gray Hills? He goes, yeah, yeah, He goes, we grew up together, you know, and stuff. And I go, he's my dad. And he told me to bring in and show you my work. And he looked at it and he said, you can consign it here for a couple weeks. And he goes, but I can't out and out buy your, your piece. Right. And I'm like, that's okay. You know, it's like, that. Right. And you know, I, <laughs> I got my foot chance. in the door. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I put, I put my, my weavings in with him and my husband and I left. And about three days later, he called us and he said, hmm. I sold both your pieces. You need to come pick up your check. And if you have more, you know, bring <laughs> yeah. them in. So that's how it started. Mm. Just, you know, but he never out and out bought one. Right. And then one time I brought in two more pieces and then he said, you're too good for galleries. He goes, you're just way too good for galleries. He goes, you need to go down to the Herd Museum. And they're having an art show this, you know, this weekend. Mm. Maybe they can give you a table. Uh, so I drove down there to the herd, and I said, I want a table. Yeah. <laughs> and that when one of the ladies just literally just laughed at me. Yeah. She says, you can't do that. Yeah. These people pay for their booth fees right. like months ago. Right. And, and then she asked me, what What do you do? I told her I'm a Navajo weaver. And she goes, let me look at your pieces. So I showed it to her. And then she goes, we never do this, but, you know, and she gave me a table. Wow. Yeah. And I had two pieces, and she said, make sure you bring a tablecloth and paper and pencil and, right. you know, your business cards and stuff. And so that's what I did. And then um, I remember the um, opening night, you know, this couple, they were both doctors from Flagstaff. They came and bought my first piece. Mm. And it was like, there was no, I didn't have to share that money with anybody. Right. You know, it right. was direct. Right. And it was just like, I can do this. You know, I can do this. And I don't remember who bought the second one, but it, you know, I had sold both pieces and I was just amazed. But that woman came to me and she goes, Are you local? Are you, do you live here in town? I go, Yeah. And she says, Well, I'll always be ready. She goes, I'm going to call on you a lot. And he goes, Because you have to, yeah. You know, Pay your booth fee. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but she did. She would call me up and she goes, we have donors coming in at 10 o'clock. I need you to be here. And I tell her, I have kids. I have babies. You right. know? And he goes, dress them up and bring them. Yeah. And I put Michael on the cradle board and <laughs> dress the air up and we drive down to the herd and <laughs> they would play around me as I'm working and stuff. And yeah. And then they... Kind of like your mom did with you. Yeah. 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 And then they selected me to be an artisan resident for four years. For four years? Four years. So that meant you didn't have to do any of the other things you were doing work-wise? Work, yeah. Right? Yeah. So I was just um, basically just working at the herd. As a full-time waiver. As a full-time waiver. And how old were you at that point, approximately? Mm. Let's see. I just had about 25. Yeah. Somewhere around there. 25, 30. In between there. Right. And then um, um, she came over. She was like, you need to try the other um, art show, you know, because I would weave a rug and just put it on my table, and then some people would come and buy it. Right. And so that's how I kind of made a living, made small pieces and stuff. And and then she told me I should try the other art show. And I had no idea. That's that why about Indian so, Market. Indian yeah. Market. Uh -huh. So, you know, I took three pieces and I drove over there and I walked in and Don Owens was the director at the time and I said, I want a table. Same thing I did at the herd. Uh -huh. And he was like, You can't do this, you know, the people have been um um you know, paid their booth months in advance and stuff. And he goes, But he goes what do you have? And I showed him my piece. He goes, oh, we got to get you in. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, um, 
the uh, one of the potters didn't show up. And he goes, do you have anything to demonstrate? And I go, I have a loom in the car. You know, I learned from the herd. Yeah. I always have something on the right. loom, you know. So I told her I have my loom in the car. And he goes, okay, we'll give you this booth, booth space. So that's how I started. What year was that? Uh, 83. In 1983. Yeah. And then in 84, I, I got my first booth. And then he told me, you're not in, you have to apply, you, yeah. apply you know, to get to get yourself in. And I did that. And I've been going ever since. Yeah. Yeah. And now two-time champion. Yeah. <laughs> Best of show. It's <laughs> amazing. And so yeah. you are now by 83, I guess, is when you got into. Mm -hmm. So you're a full-time weaver. Yeah. And so how did that transpire from then to, let's say, the next 10 or 15 years? You're raising your kids, right? Mm -hmm. And you're living yeah. still in Phoenix at that time? No, we moved to Tucson right after the, yeah. the large drug was, you know... We sold that large drug and we moved to Tucson because yeah. um, Dave wanted to go to pharmacy school. Yes. So while he was in school, I, you know, did a rug to rug living, <laughs> right? You know, and then you know, <laughs> selling them to pay, you know, rent and car payments and right. stuff. And I pay ahead and then I catch up and then I pay ahead and right. catch up. So that's how I did it. And I put both my kids through uh, U of A. Yes. And they both graduated. My daughter graduated with a media arts degree, and my son got um, um, computer science. Right. Yeah. And so, they both weave. And they both weave. <laughs> and then one of, you know, when I was demonstrating at the uh, Indian market, this woman sat with me for almost like the whole day, was just asking me questions and stuff, you know. But I never, I don't know why, but I never got tired of her asking mm. me all these questions. Mm -hmm. I just sat and just answered, you know, right. and stuff. In the meantime, talking to all the other people. Right. And she called us up and said that they're doing a, um American festival in London. Mm. And she said that everything American is going to London. I mean, they had like a graffiti artist from New York. Right. And, they had like blues singers from Chicago, right. Dixieland jazz, and all different kinds of art. And we were going to be part of the, um, the, um, uh, the, the uh, Native American part, you know. To, so it was me, uh, Kachina Carver, uh, um, a Santa Domingo Potter, um, patchwork from Seminole, and then like three different things from Alaska, mm -hmm. and a totem pole, and weaving, and. Uh, fur moccasin making mm -hmm. and stuff and it was a whole bunch of us you know so we got selected to go there and, and i remember we had to fly out of albuquerque and right. we got on this huge plane and my grandma's words came back to me wow. saying that you're going to travel the world <laughs> and i said that to my to dave and i said this is what my grandmother said you know so there every time i get on the plane i always think about those words wow yeah. And that was the first time you'd ever gone overseas. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And what was that like, that experience to be in it London? Was, it was amazing. We were there for two months. Wow. That's and a long time. It's a long in time. In London, right? Yeah. Wow. And we they put it our, put us up in a hotel near King's Row mm -hmm. where all the punkers hung out. Yeah. And so we would be walking down in the morning to go to the tube to go to the uh, museum. Right. And the punkers would just stop because they made their money by having people take pictures with them, uh, you know, and you had to pay them a pound for, right. for each photo. And they would run up to us and say, we want our pictures taken <laughs> with you because we're all dressed up, you know. And oh, stuff. Yeah. Michael's on the crater board. And, oh, yeah. Yeah, and they were just so excited to, to see us yeah. and stuff, you know. And, <laughs> yeah, and they, you know, because I'm always into music. I love music, any kind of music. Um, you know, my first... Um, kind of music was Motown from this yeah. um, lady, she, black lady, and she had all these Motown records, and I just love that kind of music. So we, and then, you know, the, sec the second lady that took her place, she was in the rockabilly music. Yeah. And so all of Elvis and per Carl Perkins, right. and all that stuff came from her. Right. And so now I meet these punkers, and they're telling me about, <laughs> you know, the Ramones. Right. And, you know, and, and, and the New York Dolls and all that. And, 
it was really cool to to meet up with them and talk to them and stuff. And, still listen and, to the Ramones? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> probably I your kids do. do too. Probably don't yeah, they? Yeah. Yeah. They, they were but they think I'm crazy anyway. Yeah, so well, it's fine. All kids think their parents <laughs> are crazy. <laughs> so you do that for yeah. two months. Two months. And were you yeah. able to sell things too while you were there? I sold a piece to the museum. It's and this was the museum of. Um, it was Muse Museum of Mankind, but it's part of the uh, British Museum. British Museum. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, the museum closed, so all the stuff is over at the, the British, British museum. museum. Have you ever gone back to London to see if it's hanging? I haven't. My kids did, but I have not. I and was it hanging? Know. Did Could they find I it? I didn't. I mean, it's a huge uh, museum. But. Yeah, it's a huge museum, but I don't know if it was hanging yeah. or not. Yeah. It's a great museum, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and that was in like the mid, mid it to... It was 85. Yeah, mid 80s. Yeah, yeah. 85, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, so you've done other things you've been awarded to. Like you've done things with the Idle Wild, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It was like in 1996, my sister and um, my nephew and her grandson, the three of them were... She was getting ready for Indian Market. So her kids were like, we're hungry, we're hungry put them in the car and drive over to the gas station just to get food for them. And then on the way back, they got hit by a drunk driver. Mm. So she's my sister, the one I did the large right. piece with. So because that happened, I just couldn't leave for over a year, mm -hmm. you know. And then my, you know, Dave kept saying that you need to, you need to get back to it. You need to start weaving and stuff. And I just couldn't bring myself to do it because right. she was my weaving partner. She I get was, it. She was my best friend, you know. And um, so I made a couple of small pieces for Indian Market because I need to keep my booth, you know. Right. And this lady came up to me and she goes, we're really interested in you having come to Idlewild. And she goes, we just wanted you to come up and talk about Navajo weaving. Mm -hmm. and, and tell people what you do and stuff. And, you know, and it was probably like one of my very first ones where mm -hmm. people asked me to talk about my work. And, and I said, yeah, okay, I'll do it. You know, So in 97, I drove up there and I did my little lecture thingy to a whole crowd and stuff. Right. And then afterwards, she came up and started introducing all the other artists that were there. It was like Michael Cabote and, you know, right. and... Uh, Tabo, what's his name? Mark, Mark Tabo. Mark Tabo and, and a few other people, Gazilda and her husband, Flutie, Flutie mm, or something? Some, yeah. Sufli. They're jewelers, Hopi jewelers. Yeah. And, you know, there was a bunch of other people that she introduced. And then she said, and this is Barbara Teller Ornells who will be teaching weaving here next year. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I started in 1998. Yeah. I started teaching weaving there. I didn't know what I was doing. I took my mom with me, uh -huh. and my mom was supposed to be my assistant. Right. But she just sat in the corner and just said, that one needs help. That one needs help. Uh -huh. You know, so <laughs> she was no help. So after two years, I told my younger sister, Linda, to come with me. Right. And, and we ended up um, teaching there. We've been doing it since two, together since 2000. And uh, we just finished this year. And yeah, so, so that's your 22nd year? 22nd, something and like that. Did, yeah, 22nd. Yeah, yeah, did they, you didn't so do it? So it would be 24 doing, for me. And COVID, yeah. did that stop it for a couple of years? It did. It did. We did um, one year. Um, it was the very first year of COVID that right. we didn't we didn't have. Right. It. Then we, last, last year we did it, but it was like very, we had people like, 10 feet apart <laughs> right. and stuff and right and then this year we did the same thing so and you teach people come and they pay mm -hmm. money or something right to mm -hmm. to learn how to weave right yes yeah and they do that for what period of time how yeah. long is this the okay so school? Two, we we have three weeks three that weeks. we do and the first week is beginner's week second week is intermediate and the third week's advanced yes and we've had students in the advanced I mean, usually they take all three right. uh, three weeks, but we've had students that have been coming with us for eighteen years. Yeah, yeah, and they're so, working on large pieces, yeah. doing different designs. That has to be interesting to it's see. Really interesting. Right, they didn't have what any they, skill set at yeah. all, and now they're doing yeah. amazing things. Yeah, and they're but all. We have, but we also offer um, scholarships for Navajo students, ah. and we're allowed up to four, mm. so they can take 
all three weeks or one week or two weeks or however, you know, whatever their plans are. And uh, and so they do. Works. They usually get four students every year that come up and try to learn. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and they have to be native, and 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 um, they have to apply. Yeah. yeah, and is it usually the Navajo kids? Mainly, the, yeah, I would think. Right, yeah. This year we had one from Agua Caliente, the ranch, yeah. from there. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah, because, I mean, people don't realize it, but, you know, it's easy to lose that skill set in a culture, especially right. the, the yeah. spinning part. Yeah, Man. and then we've been working a lot with the Herd Museum, and um, they, they usually do, like, an all-Navajo workshop, and we get students up to 20 students and they um, they have to have some kind of weaving background in their family like their grandmother right. had done it or something something broke in the family where the weaving doesn't go right. forward right. and stuff so we've been teaching a lot a lot of them how to to weave and so is that working is it successful it's, it's amazing how success it is. Yeah. I mean, they, the Herd Museum did one at the Navajo Nation Museum, mm -hmm. and they told us that they're all going to be young, 18 to, I think they said 18 to 40 and stuff, but that's not what we got. We got like 18 all the way up to like 80 mm -hmm. and stuff. And these are women that were used to work for the government mm. in D.C. Right. And they came home, and they were tired, and they wanted to reconnect with their, right. their, their you know, what their line right. of weaving and uh yeah and we're able to teach them and you're not just uh, teaching the weaving skill itself but also the prayers and the things that go along with it can no, you do that no i don't do that um i teach weaving to everybody who wants to learn right but one thing i don't teach is my prayers and my song because they belong to me just you they belong to my children yeah I they, got it. yeah and yeah. they are the only ones who will learn yeah and and know you know know that those the, yeah right. our own family stories right but i do tell navajo students that you need to go back and research in your family see you know where your line came from where it stopped right Somebody in your family knows songs and prayers, mm. and they have to, you know, f they have to find that for themselves. Yeah, re-engage. Yeah, because mm -hmm. yeah, that is a com very important component of yeah. the weaving. I don't yeah. think people don't realize that, yeah. but it is. Yeah. yeah, you know, and I get a lot of flack for teaching non non Navajos and stuff, and I tell them that I teach them because I want them to know what it's like to be. A, what we go through as weavers. Right. And we need allies. Right. You know, and it's like something comes up, somebody wrote a book, somebody wrote a paper about Navajo weaving, and there's a lot of, you know, things that are not accurate in the in the stories or mm. whatever we call our allies and say, hey, read this and tell us what you think. If you don't agree with it, you know, help us right. change this. And we've changed a lot of things that way. You know, and that's one of the reasons why I teach non-natives, mm. you know, and also to have them have a better understanding of what we go through. Right. You know, they're never going to put out a shingle and say, I'm a Navajo no. weaver. That's, that's impossible. Right. Yeah. No. So. And I don't think the individuals that would go to a school like that or have that interest to do something like that anyway. Yeah. I think people, uh, we've had a few students that have had that in mind when they first come to class. And it seems like they have a harder time learning. And then they're like, okay, I need to do something else. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And yeah. yeah so it, <laughs> yeah. I've the, tried spinning before. <laughs> I know how difficult it is. There's no way. I mean, it takes a, yeah. a great skill set to do mm -hmm. what you do. I mean, you're like, a, a world class athlete is what yeah. you are, quite frankly. Yeah. Very similar, but even rarer, quite honestly. Mm -hmm. You know, which it's true. Mm -hmm. I mean, just the, I mean, and it's, there's a rhythm to weaving. I just love the sound mm -hmm. of the baton. And it's just, it's like a cadence. Yeah. Does that affect how you, when you weave, do you feel that rhythm going? You must, right? Yeah. Especially you somebody can. who you loves go music. Zone. You go into a zone. Yeah. Yeah, and you don't realize that you miss dinner or you miss, yeah. you know, something. You know, and I, you know, Michael um, got COVID really, really bad. Mm. My um, nephew was a home health care worker mm. and he lived with us. 
and he caught it from his work, and mm. he brought it home to us. And we thought we had a gas leak because we all couldn't breathe and we all couldn't, you know. Right. And this is like at the very start yeah. of COVID, and people had no idea what was going on right. and stuff. And the firefighters came and took one look at us and said, you guys need to go to the hospital, mm. <laughs> you know. And my nephew passed away. Mm. He, he couldn't, yeah, cause it's too far gone for him. Yeah. They, they'd already affected his lungs really, really yeah. bad, you know. But Michael spent 50 days on a ventilator, oh, and he was, oh my God. he was in a coma for that long. Oh, my God. He had to relearn how to walk and talk and breathe and, you know, all that, oh all that stuff. And he finally came out of it because... His dad is a pharmacist, right. you know, and he kept saying, there's a new drug here, a new drug there, right. bugging the doctors, you know, because Mikey was a good test case because he was young, you right. know, and he was healthy, and and they used him as one of the studies to give him all these medicines, and he came out of it. Stuff, yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, so during that time when he was in a coma, he would get agitated, and he would just, he, you know freak out and stuff and then, then the um, nurses would call me and he said that we can't get him to calm down so they would put the phone by his ears and then I would describe to him the weaving mm. you know like we're weaving two gray today you know, we're, mm. we're moving the, red, the the brown over we're moving the white over we're, we're making a pattern you know oh it's time to change the pattern you right. know and stuff and I would strum the the, the work uh, and he would hear the, the beating yeah. and stuff and it totally calmed him down yeah. and and the nurses are like how does that happen I go it's in his blood yeah. this is his it's, it's, that's right it's his spider woman's line. gift right this is his bloodline yeah. you know and stuff and so every time they did that and that's how they were able to wake him up mm. you know because I was on the phone with him and describing the weaving to mm. him and stuff and Telling him, we're almost done. We're at the very end. We're doing our two by twos, <laughs> you know, and stuff. And um, and then he woke up, and he was calm when he woke up. Yeah. So that was so. I know that weaving is soothing. I know that it has a spirit, and I know that it's healing for us. Mm. You know, it's like when you don't weave for a long while, you start yeah. you start to feel right, like you need to do something. You know, yeah, I believe so. it. You know, when I feel a weaving, I can feel the same thing. Mm -hmm. it's, I mean, I can feel it. Sometimes mm -hmm. I just can, you know, I can feel the person who did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and you get a sense of who they were and mm -hmm. what they were. And the wool, it just, that's, you know, it's yeah, there. It's that's an, it's me. A, yeah. I touch all these old weavings oh, and yeah. I just feel them. Every yeah. one of them. Yeah. You know, you come by and you just... That, you know, it doesn't leave just because it left your hands. It's just that it embodies the person that right. made it. And you can. Right. And sometimes I, I'll get a weaving. And I'll just start laughing because I can just see the personality of the mm -hmm. person who. You know, I would like. I'll say, I, I wish I could meet this person because mm -hmm. the way they did their colors and matched yeah. and did things that were just, you know, unusual. And you can mm -hmm. just see their sense of humor. Yeah. And the way that they, you know looked at life mm -hmm. you know because that's their artist I yeah mean, so yeah and i would imagine though art may not have the spirituality that it does but for painters i think they feel that same mm -hmm. or even sculptors uh, yeah. there's something about yeah. that and then like basket weavers yeah you know, kachina carvers yeah. they all talk about like that you know it's, yeah. i think every um art form has that spirit yeah you know and they can feel it and they can talk to it yeah yeah so, but Michael's doing well now. Oh, he's much better. Yeah. He's finally went back weaving. to weaving. Yeah. And it took a long, long time. Oh, yeah. He had to stop weaving for a couple of years. Yeah. He still has to wear a mask when he weaves yeah. because of the fibers that come off the, uh, the weaving. Yeah. And he, he can't breathe those in. Yeah. So he went from like 25% um, use of his lungs. Mm. He's up to like almost 90 now. Oh, wow. So, yeah, that's great. And then the doctor says it's going to be a couple more years yeah. before. He's completely out of it. Yeah, I'm so. sure. He probably felt it when he was in Santa Fe, too, because mm -hmm. of the yeah, altitude. Yeah, it's a really high altitude. Yep. Yeah, we yep. had to have um, oxygen 
cans with us for him just in case. Yeah, you know, no, stuff. absolutely. But he, did, he did good. Yeah. He did, yeah. Oh, well, well, so that well. was his first trip out of Tucson in two years. Wow. Yeah. And going to Indian Market yeah. of all places. Well, he didn't go to the booth. He just stayed at the, the house I that we rented. I think that's a very good idea. Yeah. Too many people. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. last year, even last year, it was like, I was so amazed how many yeah, people yeah. were there. I had a huge public glass in front of me yeah. last year. Yeah, no, I mean, and everyone there had masks on last mm -hmm. year. I don't know about this year. But and most of them. Yeah, most it's good. Of them, yeah. Respectful. Yeah. Yeah. So. Now, you've also done a couple of books, too, right? Yes. Let's, uh, I'd like yeah. to talk about those. Well, um, gosh, I think it was in 2013, I went to Peru. Hmm. And for a weaving conference, and and um, um, they asked me to talk about Navajo weaving, so I gave this whole the talk about Navajo weaving. I took my mom and my grandmother's both my grandmother's weavings with me, mm. and showed them you know right. what they look like and stuff. And there was a woman in the in the audience, and she was uh, she's a publisher of uh, Thrawn Books. And she's done books on weavings from all over the world. Mm. And she said she's never done a Navajo weaving book. And so she got a hold of me and asked me if I would be interested. I go, only if I do it with my sister mm. because my sister's the writer. Mm -hmm. she, you know, she, right. yeah, I can talk, but she, she can write. Right. <laughs> so she said it was a good idea, you know. So we all, we went from one end of the reservation to the other and up and down and met so many different weavers. And a lot of them didn't want to be interviewed, you know, but that we, and then we told them that we would write whatever they wanted to say. Yeah. You know, and that we would never change anything. They could tell us what they want to tell us in English or in Navajo, and mm. we would write exactly what they say. Mm. And, um, and so we did that and we highlighted. 30 weavers mm. and stuff, plus our, our family. And the title and of the and, book? Uh, Spider, Spider Women's Woman. Children. Spider Woman's Children, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, and it's basically interviewing the weavers and getting their, kind of like what we're doing, but right. their story. Right. And how it relates really to their weavings and how they did their right. life. And that. We, we picked weavers that were uh, just starting out yes. in their prime and then old weavers yeah. and men weavers and, you know, yeah. and stuff. And it's the first book ever that's written about Navajo weaving from Navajo, Navajo weavers. Yeah. 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 So it's just. And is that book still in publication? Yes. You can get it on Amazon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you'll, you'll sign them. Right? I'll sign them. <laughs> <laughs> My sister, we always have copies, you know, at the, at the, the Herd Museum Fair or yes. Indian Market. Yes. So. And then tell me about the other book. The other book is a how to, how mm. to weave a Navajo rug. And it's also available on Amazon. My sister and I, we started um, teaching, we started putting it on paper, you know. We, we went from one piece of paper to, and we kept adding and adding. By the time, you know, uh, we decided to do the book, we had like 25 pages of, you know, things. Right. And, and it, it was a really fun project to do. And the only thing that we should have done was to teach the publisher and, you know, all the people that were involved, at least, teach them a class so they have an idea you know so they took it. out some like in the warping part where right. they took some stuff out that, that didn't make sense you know and right. so that's the only problem we had with the book but otherwise it, it turned out really well my brother-in-law my sister Linda's husband took photos of you know each step and mm -hmm. and we put it into into a book and we made it we made sure it was a spiral book mm. so that you know when you open it it stays open right and and stuff and right my sister really fought for that <laughs> and if you read that so. book and followed it would you be able to yeah we, yeah. yeah interesting yeah yeah that's cool because we go from the beginning like the warping part yeah all the way to the finish uh, and taking the, the, the oh yeah the i should get down. i should get some of those for the gallery yeah can we get those through you sure yeah and we i think you can get it through it's uh schiffer's oh schiffer did it yeah yeah yeah, no, that's, what's the hardest part about weaving? 
the hardest part? I know. There's a lot. I know. And I may not even be able to put it into one. But, I mean, I've heard warping is very difficult. And Yeah. And, uh, I love warping. Yeah. It's just uh, so for second you, nature to me, yeah. you know, and stuff. And it's all math. You know, you, yeah. if you do the math on your warping, and yes. it's really easy. If you just do it without even figuring out how many strings you're going to be playing with, right. it's the hard part. Yes. You know, because... And my my son always teases me. He, he always says, "Your mind is like a Tetris." He goes, <laughs> "You kind of know where things are gonna fall and right. fall into place, you know." And but for me, I think the hardest is probably seeing them go. Mm. Yeah, um, but I always make sure they go to a good home. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Because it's a long time of your life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you want them to take care of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's something. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> so if people want to get your weavings, right? Mm-hmm. I know they can go to the herd mm-hmm. when they have their show, which is in March, first right. week of March or so, and they can go to Indian Market, but can they go as, if they go, oh, I want to, you know, I'd like to get one, and I can't go to those things. Can they mm-hmm. contact you through your website uh, or through yes. a way? What, and so um, how would they do that? Uh, our website is NavajoRugWeavers.com. Okay. And it's my sister Linda and I's uh, website. You can get a hold of us through there. Or uh, my email is Navajo underscore Weaver underscore Diva at Yahoo.com. Uh-huh. Yeah. So they can either email. And do you have an Instagram account? I do. And it's under Bobby Ornalis. Okay. There you go. So yeah. those are all the way you can get Barbara's <laughs> weaving. So she's a superstar. She doesn't need a Joe Tanner or a Mark Sublet. She needs, <laughs> she just needs time, right? Yeah. I mean, that's well, the I need part. you guys as friends. Yeah. yeah. No. And allies. Yes, we are. So. And we have been for a very, very yeah. long time. You know, I'm a fan. I've always been a fan. I've bought things and I enjoy having them. But they never come on the resale market. I can tell you that. Yeah. I, they just very rare, exceptionally rare. I yeah. think somebody has to die, basically. <laughs> Do you know where most of your weavings are or not? Most of them, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. In a lot of um, private homes yeah. collection. Yeah, that's, a, that's yeah. important. You should almost do like, I think you should personally do what we do with artists. is called a catalog resume, which is a book of everything you've ever done. Ooh. I know it's a lot of work and everything, but boy, it would be a very interesting thing yeah. to do. You know, and because you know where most of them are, yeah, and you just document them all, and that way also no one can ever try to, you know, make one that looks like yours, even mm-hmm. though they would, you know, you would know it and other people would, but you know, you would know that you know these are the pieces and this is the history, mm-hmm. and that's what artists do. Yeah. You know, they do a catalog resume like Maynard Dixon or one of the other ones. You know, mm-hmm. but you know. How many weavings do you think you've done? I have no idea. Yeah, I mean, it's not that many. I mean, you've done maybe, let's just say, five a year, right? Yeah, at least. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. for if you want to count the earlier ones, you probably yeah. Like, yeah, the early, early ones, I have no idea yeah. where they would be. So there's yeah. at least 300 probably, maybe. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, somewhere on there. Yeah. Yeah. So that's... I'll put that in your ballpark. Maybe you can get <laughs> one of your grandkids or your yeah. kids that want. Well, I'm gonna be going to California in next month. Yeah. My grandson is six. Yep. And he told me last night he wants to learn. So he said he wants to make a piece and sell it for fifty dollars. Yeah, that's so doable. I told him that's good goal. Yeah, that's yeah. doable. He's six. <laughs> he's six. Yeah. 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 So he's ready. So I'm gonna go and I spend a couple weeks with him <laughs> and see. Yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, excited. Yeah, He's and that so that'll be the generation. seventh generation, mm-hmm. right, of Weaver. Yeah. Yeah. So you can start telling him yeah. the stories he yeah. gets to learn. Yeah, and then our granddaughter Roxanne is Roseanne's line. You know, this uh, hobby is going to be my line. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, Barbara, thank you so much for coming on. You're I always welcome. enjoy just seeing you and talking to you, <laughs> but this was a real treat for me just to hear all the backstory and I appreciate everything you shared because I know it was very personal, mm-hmm. but was something that I think the world would love to hear. I know we're going to get a lot of people that will go, wow, that was a great podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, and by the way, so Barbara came in, how this happened is she came to buy a wedding basket. That's right. And uh, we happened to have the one that would work for what she needed. Right. (laughs) (laughs) For my grandson who's getting married. Yeah. 
September 24th. So. Uh, when she said, oh, I'll come in and pick it up, I was like, oh, I want more than that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to steal you for about an hour and get some of the really nitty gritty stuff I can't ever <laughs> ask you when I, because usually when we see each other, we're running or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so, there's a quick hello because yeah. I'm busy selling or, right. yeah. So. Yeah, that's the latest. So that's what yeah. the, one of the great things about the podcast is I actually get to do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much. And uh, we'll talk sooner. And I want to talk to you about getting the books for the gallery. Okay. Yeah, I definitely Sounds do. Good. All right. All right. Barbara and Alice. Bye. Bye.